In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, as we come to celebrate this Mass after the Greek feast of Corpus Christi, being so thankful for our faith, for the Mass, for the Eucharist, let us call to mind our sins that we may be people who truly remain with our Lord in everything that we do. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, strength of those who hope in you, graciously hear our pleas, and since without you mortal frailty can do nothing, grant us always the help of your grace. And in following your commands, we may please you by our resolve and our deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Kings. After the death of Naboth, the Lord said to Elijah the Tishbite, Start down to meet Ahab the king of Israel, who rules in Samaria. He will be in the vineyard of Naboth, of which he has come to take possession. This is what you shall tell him. The Lord says, after murdering, do you also take possession? For this the Lord says, in the place where the dogs licked up the blood of Naboth, the dogs shall lick up your blood too. Ahab said to Elijah, have you found me out, my enemy? Yes, he answered, because you have given yourself up to doing evil in the Lord's sight. I am bringing evil upon you. I will destroy you and will cut off every male in Ahab's line, whether slave or freeman in Israel. I will make your house like that of Jeroboam, son of Nippah, and like that of Besha, son of Ahijah, because of how you have provoked me by leading Israel into sin. Against Jezebel too, the Lord declared, The dog shall devour Jezebel in the district of Jezreel. When one of Ahab's line dies in the city, dogs will devour him. When one of them dies in the field, the birds of the sky will devour him. Indeed, no one gave himself up to the doing of evil in the sight of the Lord, as did Ahab, urged on by his wife Jezebel. He became completely abominable by following idols, just as the Amorites had done whom the Lord drove out before the children of Israel. When Ahab heard these words, he tore his garments and put on sackcloth over his bare flesh. He fasted, slept in the sackcloth, and went about subdued. Then the Lord said to Elijah the Tishbite, Have you seen that Ahab has humbled himself before me? Since he has humbled himself before me, I will not bring the evil in his time. I will bring the evil upon his house, during the reign of his son. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Have mercy on me, O God, in your goodness. In the greatness of your compassion, wipe out my offense. Thoroughly wash me from my guilt, and of my sin cleanse me. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. For I acknowledge my offense, and my sin is before me always. Against you only have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Turn away your face from my guilt and blot out my turn away your face from my sins and blot out all my guilt. Free me from the blood guilt 
O God, my saving God, then my tongue shall revel in your justice. Merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. I read him from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. And you may be children of your heavenly Father. For he makes the sun rise on the bad and the good and causes rain to fall on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what recompense will you have? Do not tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brothers only, what is unusual about that? Do not the pagans do the same? So be perfect, just as your heavenly Father is perfect. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters, as I mentioned before Mass, we don't have very good news in our first reading. It's not a very happy first reading about King Ahab. And we know that he wanted the vineyard of Naboth, and Naboth was unwilling to give it to him, so he had him killed. He had him falsely accused of blasphemy and killed so he could take possession of the vineyard that he wanted. And then we see how Elijah the prophet is sent after Naboth, to basically condemn him from the word of the Lord, condemn him for the way that he condemned Naboth to a shameful death. And it's very interesting because in many ways, by having Naboth accused of blasphemy, he was cutting off Naboth from his eternal rest. Because being accused of blasphemy means that no one would remember your name. Everyone would disown you. And thus, in the Jewish mentality, you would not have eternal life. Hence why Elijah is saying how every one of Ahab's lines would be devoured by dogs or eaten by birds of the air because they believed that if your body was not buried, you would not have eternal rest. And so basically saying that God is going to see out that when you die, you'll be devoured by dogs or eaten by birds and not have eternal life. That the punishment, in a sense, fits the crime in God's perfect justice. But then we see something very unexpected. Ahab repents. You don't see many powerful rulers repenting in the Bible, just like you don't see many powerful rulers in even our day repenting. They usually go down with the ship. They go down with their sin. But Ahab is different. Ahab repents. He humbles himself before God. And God goes to Elijah basically saying, I will not bring this evil in his time, but it will happen to his sons. Now, does this mean that God is flaming his sons? No. What it means is his sons will fall to the same sins. His sons will choose the sin of Ahab, and we see that they do this in subsequent readings. Stay tuned. I think the point is this. Elijah had a very important mission from God. He was called to love in an extraordinary way, to literally put his life on the line for the sake of the salvation of his king. And in our culture these days, it is very easy for us to be armchair Catholics. And what I mean by this is to not reach out in love and conversion to those that we see falling into sin. It's very easy for us to condemn them in private talk. It's very easy for us to say they're doing wrong. But how many times does our love look extraordinary like that of Elijah the prophet where we actually reach out to those in office, those in authority, and try to help them to that conversion, try to help them that humility, in a sense putting our own hide on the line for the sake of their hide. But yet this is exactly what Jesus is talking about in our gospel reading. You know, You have heard that was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies. For if you love those who love you, what recompense will you have? Do not tax collectors do the same? 
And if you greet your brothers only, what is unusual about that? So be perfect, just as your heavenly Father is perfect. And the perfection we're talking about is the perfection of God's justice. The perfection of his justice tempered with his mercy. And for us to imitate God's mercy and justice is so crucial, especially in our day. To not feel just self-righteous, but to temper that with mercy. To not just say, well, I'll live well and to heck with all of them, but in mercy to really reach out, to really care, and to be willing to suffer for the sake of another's conversion, for the sake of their salvation. None of us likes to challenge anybody. None of us likes to really put ourselves in the firing line. But I think there are times when God calls us to do that, when God calls us to really reach out and to be merciful as God the Father is merciful. And so often Jesus himself gives us the words to speak, inspires us what we could say, how we could help, what we could do. But how often we don't follow through on that when we get those little inspirations. So I think for us, as we continue to live out our faith in trying times, let us pray that we will imitate the example of the prophet Elijah, who was willing to love his king, who killed an innocent man in a shameful way, just to get his vineyard. And pray that we too can love others, even in their sinfulness, to truly be merciful in the way that we speak, that they may recognize God's justice but also recognize his mercy, that they may follow this witness and example of this king, Ahab, and truly come to repentance as well. Let us offer our prayers and petitions. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Bishop William, all priests, deacons, all who serve in the church and our communities, that we will be ever faithful to the faith that has been handed down to us, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Pray for all the sick and suffering, all those who have hope, those who do not believe in God and those who care for them. Pray in a special way for those affected by this virus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Pray for our parish communities, our own families. Pray in a special way for all of our elected leaders, all those with authority over us, that we may continue to support them in prayer and love and mercy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have died, all those who will die this day, that they will know God's eternal love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for hearing our prayers. Help us to follow the example of the prophet Elijah, that we may truly hear your call and be willing to be sent to reach out to those in need of your justice and mercy. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray. Brothers and sisters, at my sacrifice and yours, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord the sep sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. O God, who in the offerings presented here provide for the twofold needs of human nature, nourishing us with, the food, with food and renewing us with your sacrament, grant, we pray, that the sustenance they provide may not fail us in body or in spirit. Through Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Right and just. 
It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift. Since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you. As with joy, we proclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise, for through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, By the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing. And gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death 
you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, the order of bishops are the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind amendments to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, to whom you restore in the world, all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Peace, O Lord, be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. and that the graces given to us at Mass may be extended to you as well. Let us pray. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. 
I embrace you as if you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. As this reception of your Holy Communion, O Lord, foreshadows the union of the faithful in you, so may it bring about unity in your church, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Have a good one, everybody.